And it is to the glory of God that you are here. It is not by your power. It is not by your might. And he has brought you here for a reason. And you have to cooperate with him. And it will be to the glory of God for you to shut down your cell phone. God cannot be speaking and your phone is ringing. Oh, it will be to the glory of God for you not to watch movies on your phone. When the word of God is going on, you are attending to another business. Those are acts of irreverence to the almighty God. It will be an act of irreverence to the almighty God for you to shut down your ears from listening. Or for you to be sleeping out of indifference. The Lord is in his holy temple. Let everyone be silent before him. It will be an act of irreverence like the children of Israel did. God was speaking and they were speaking. Malachi said, thus says the Lord. He said, God has spoken, but you said. It is an act of irreverence for God to be speaking and you are speaking. He said, every tongue should keep silent before him. So I want to welcome you to the Vision Day 2024. In fact, let me add this to it. It is an act of irreverence for God to be speaking and you are roaming around. So people who have just joined us, we always set up a day in a year to share our purpose, programs, and process for collective ownership, prayer, and actions. Church growth is not mystical, although it's a mystery unveiled by divine human partnership in an atmosphere of faith, unity, and love. I want to repeat that. Church growth is not mystical, although it is a mystery. Unveiled by divine human partnership, but in an atmosphere of faith, unity, and love. Atmosphere matters. It is people that make great churches, not angels. If you see a church doing well, it is not the company of angels. It's the company of people. And if you see a church not doing well, it is not the company of angels, but company of people. But the other kind of people. So the relationship between the people and the ministers makes churches progressive and fruitful. Ministers cannot do the work alone. People cannot do the work alone. No matter how anointed a pastor is, if the people will not cooperate with that pastor, nothing will happen. No matter, you know, how cooperative the people are, if the pastor is not serious with the business the Lord has called him to do, nothing will happen. So, the relationship between the people and the... And I want you to listen very well today because I have a lot of things to share with you. I was in my office till around to 2 a.m. or past 1 a.m. this morning. 
And I want to really download what the Spirit of the Lord has put in my heart. And I'll rush everything else. The relationship between the people and the ministers makes churches progressive and fruitful. If the relationship is biblical, symbiotic, respectful, and piloted by faith, unity, and love. If the relationship is obedient, there is nothing set before us that we cannot achieve. Nothing. Nothing. Nothing set before us that we cannot achieve. This spiritual state is by choice. You can choose to follow. You can choose not to follow. You can choose to be submissive. And you can choose to do your own thing. So if individuals choose to change their approach, believing, living, giving, relating, obeying, it has a ripple effect on the health and overall progress of the church. And that is where vision comes in. That's where vision comes in. Vision is the revelation of the preferred future that is to be made manifest. When we're talking about vision, we're not talking about what we can see now. It is a preferred future of what will be made manifest. So when a godly vision is received and processed in a godly, prudent, and collaborative pathway, it will hasten toward the goal and will not fail. Isn't that what Habakkuk said in Habakkuk 2, 1 to 3? said, I will stand on my guard post and station myself on the rampart, and I will keep watch to see what he will speak to me, and how I may reply when I'm reproved. Then the Lord answered me and said, record the vision and inscribe it on tablets, that the one who reads it may run. Vision is to be written, and vision is to be read. For the vision is yet for the appointed time. It is toward the goal and it will not fail. Though it tarries, wait for it. For it will certainly come. It will not delay. And this vision day will take another thorn. I'm going to, you know, go into pastoral exhortation. And I'm going to be speaking on your conscience and reverence. Your conscience and reverence. I want to repeat that again. Your conscience and reverence. And this message is purely pastoral. Purely pastoral. Ecclesiological. By that I mean... It centers on the church, not the church universal, but the church local. And so it has a dogmatic form. I can call it dogmatic theology because it has to do with us. And it is prophetic as well. It is for us as a people, house of hope. And may we humble ourselves to listen attentively to what God has to say for our corporate good. And let the church say amen. amen. So we bless the Lord for his goodness to us in the house of hope in the year 2023. We experience the hand of God in every area. Spiritually. Numerically. Financially. In infrastructure. In every area, we experience a great move of God, and we give him thanks for that. And God gave us a mandate in 2023, the restoration of all things, reverence. Amazingly, God is saying the same thing to us again in 2024. 
He is unchanging until we change. He is unchanging until we change. Because God is not interested in speed that is not accompanied by transformation. God is not interested in speed that is not accompanied by transformation. It cost him nothing to keep you at a spot until you align and change. I heard Sister, you know, uh, uh, additional talking about that when she was leading worship. That, you know, God will make you to stay at a spot. You know, you, you can stay. He is not willing to push you ahead. No. Even as a congregation. You know, that happened to the children of Israel when Miriam and uh, Aaron rebelled against Moses. God stopped them. They couldn't move for seven days. They couldn't move for seven days. Right? Because they rebelled against the Lord. Because there is a form of collective suffering that goes along with individual disobedience and rebellion. There is a form of collective suffering. I can remember, you know, uh, somebody who went to the army. By the grace of God, we have people that have gone, you know, to the army, U.S. army. You know, from this church. I think it was uh, Reverend Tokode then. Uh, he went to the army and uh, he told his wife that he would be coming back home after going for months. And so everybody was happy that he would be coming. And so as they were preparing, you know, his, his squadron, you know, his battalion, they, they, you know, somebody just went, you know, to smoke. Before the following day. And you know what happened? Okay, the leader said, none of you is going anywhere because of the disobedience of one. You knew what happened to the children of Israel when Achan stole. Majority died just because of the sin of one. There is a form of collective punishment that comes to us as a body because of the sin of one. Think about that. I have never defined love as this, and I've never seen anyone did that in my life. And listen to it. Love is a corporate setting. In a corporate setting, is defined as weighing the impact of your action and in action on the body's overall health and allowing that to inform your behavior. That's love. I want to repeat that. Love in a corporate setting is defined as weighing the impact of your action and inaction on the body's overall health and allowing that to inform your behavior. That you are not selfish. Okay, this is what I want to do. And all. But you look at the impact of that over the overall health and that informs your behavior. I need to repeat that again. Love in a corporate setting is defined as weighing. Even in your family, even in your family, as a child, you don't just do whatever you want to do when you want to do it, how you want to do it, but you look at the impact of that on your family. On your family name. Love is a corporate setting. Look at what happened to Achan. He stole alone. But look at the punishment. He was killed. His wife was killed. His father was killed. His mother was killed. His children were killed. And his livestock, thank you, was killed. Everything that has to do with him went for it.
and the nation was punished for it. Innocent people were killed in the Battle of Hai because of his indiscretion. <laughs> Love in a corporate setting is defined as weighing the impact of your action and inaction on the body's overall health and allowing that to inform your behavior. November 6, 2022, this message came from the Lord. If you do everything else with irreverence for me, it is nothing. Your giving is nothing. Your worship is nothing. Everything you do is nothing. Your evangelism is nothing. Everything you do is nothing. Reverence is the key to revival and full restoration. When you get this right out of hope, everything else will fall in line. A son honors his father and a servant his master. If I then am the father, where is my honor? And if I am a master, where is my reverence? Says the Lord of hosts to you, priest, who despise my name. Yet you say, in what way have we despised your name? A son honors his father and a servant respects his master. If I am your father and master, where are the honor and respect I deserve? Because you have shown contempt for my name. Listen, listen. I want to give you two reasons why the church is a complex assembly. I want, I want you to listen, on site and online. Why the church is a complex assembly. The church congregation is a complex assembly because it is a congregation of people with different foundations, personalities, issues, temperaments, focus group, male, female, children, youth, adults, different levels of maturity. And that's why, you know, the word of God will come to us and some people will say, wow, this is the word of the Lord. And some people will say, what is this? Different levels of maturity and different level of status. That's what makes the church complex. And we come together and we are hearing God's word at the same time. If not for the word of God and the power of the Holy Spirit, there will be tension and offense of different kinds. That is why God sends his word to us to transform us and bring us into a vertical relationship with him first by Jesus Christ and then into transformed horizontal relationship with one another. Because if we do not have the right vertical relationship, you know, with God, we cannot have the right horizontal relationship with one another. Isn't that what the word of God says in 1 John 1, 5 to 7? This is the message we have heard from him and announced to you that God is light and in him there is no darkness at all. If we say that we have fellowship with him and yet walk in the darkness, we lie and do not practice the truth. But if we walk in the light as he himself is in the light, we have fellowship with one another. And the blood of Jesus, his son, cleanses us from all sin. In that scripture, we have the vertical relationship first with God the Father. Our fellowship is first with him. And then with one another. And take note of this. Our fellowship with one another becomes progressively godly and glorious. The more our fellowship with God becomes biblical, and influenced by the Holy Spirit. 
We cannot have a good relationship with one another if we don't have good relationship with God. If we don't have good relationship with one another, it means that we do not have good relationship with God. I want to repeat that. Our fellowship with one another becomes progressively godly and glorious. See, when you come to church and you don't flow along, when you come to church and say, stand up and let us sing, you are sitting. When we come to church and we say, let us pray, you are on your phone. The problem is not with the church. The problem is with you and the Father. It shows that your private life with God is faulty. It's faulty. Our relationship with one another becomes progressively godly. And, 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 and listen, we have taught the people of God wrongly. And so they come to a church to be entertained. We want to put in different measures to force people to be attentive. To force people to flow along. If it has become so bad that some people invite, you know, comedians. To the church to excite the people. Because we have taught the people that it is what we do here. That determines how the word of God is being received. So we want to make the word of God applicable and marketable. And so in a place where there is no noise, in a place where there is no entertainment, everything goes cold and we say God is not there. Our fellowship with one another becomes progressively godly and glorious. The more our fellowship with God becomes biblical and influenced by the Holy Spirit. It is when we are in this state of vertical and horizontal blessedness and awesomeness that the activities of the gates of hell have no power over us. It is when we come to this state of vertical and horizontal blessedness that the activities of the host of hell will not prevail against us. I want to repeat that. It is when we intentionally come to this state of blessedness and awesomeness that the activities of the gates of hell cannot prevail against us as a people. Oh. Let me tell you the other thing that makes the church congregation complex. Listen very well. The other thing that makes the church congregation complex is the voluntary nature. Voluntary nature of it. With no sense of accountability. No physical wages attached. And no fear of consequences for wrongdoing. It makes the church very complex. If you don't do what you are supposed to do, nobody will query you for it. If you don't come when you are supposed to come, nobody will query you for it. If you don't give what the Lord has told you to give, you can decide that you don't give and that is it. No sense of accountability. No physical wages attached. No fear of consequences for wrongdoing. Unlike what takes place in the secular world. Can, can, you, can you tell the IRS that you, you won't fire? And you are given a fine to pay. You say, I'm not going to pay. Can you tell them at your work that, you know, what's that? Oh, why are you not at work? I'm sleeping. I'm tired. Then you are fired. But in the church, the voluntary, you just decide what you want to do. And if, even the pastor has to beg you.
it makes the church very complex. Without the fear of God, that is, that, underline that, without the fear of God, the church is susceptible to different kinds of behavioral deficiencies that are often difficult to control. Without the fear of God. People tend to take things for granted, operate by a different standard. You see somebody who will punish a worker under him or her for coming late and will come to church very late. The pastor cannot talk. In the, in the workplace, the court, ah, no nonsense. Boss is coming. And if the pastor talk to me, he say, ah, ah, to your tent, oh, Israel. Double standard. In the same being. You are prayed by a different standard. Many of you, 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 you have written people off. So I don't take that nonsense from you. But in the church, if the pastor raises his voice, say, you can't talk to me like that. And you freely do what you cannot do in the marketplace without any fear of consequences. That, that, that makes the church very complex. Very, very complex. You're given an assignment, you don't even show up. You just travel. So, uh, you know, I don't owe anybody anything. So I threw a diagnostic question to the leaders and workers last week. I threw a diagnostic question. And listen to that question. And that question, you know, was based on the scripture, 1 Timothy chapter 3, verse 15. Said, but if I'm delayed, I write so that you may know how you should conduct yourself in the house of God. How you should conduct yourself in the house of God. How you should conduct yourself in the house of God. That means the house of God is not a place where you conduct yourself anyhow. There is order in the house of God so that you may know how to, many of us don't know how to behave in the house of God. And we are passing a wrong legacy generations to come. The church of the living God, the pillar and ground of the truth. Look at that question. In what areas do you think irreverence is manifested in our midst? In what areas do you think irreverence is manifested in our midst? And how can we correct it? That was a question. That was a diagnostic question. Let me run some of the answers given in no particular order. I will run some of the answers. These are not from me. Answers given in no particular order. And as I do, check your life for what is true. As I do, I'm going to check my life for what is true in all these things. Don't defend yourself. Instead, repent and forsake them, perfecting holiness in the fear of God. Number one, living a double life. Living a double life. Deliberately living in sin. Deliberately living in sin. You know, deliberately doing Galatians chapter, chapter 5, 19 to 21. I'm going, I'm going to read, I'm going to read that. Galatians chapter 5, deliberately doing. So if, if, you are, if you are doing any of these things mentioned here, then uh, you're living a double life. Now the works of the flesh are evident, which are adultery, fornication, right? Uncleanness, lewdness. Adultery, somebody married, having an affair with, you know, somebody, you know, somebody uh, uh, married. 
fornication, people that are, are married, you know, having an affair together. Uncleanness, lewdness, all right? Idolatry, sorcery, hatred, contentions, jealousies, outburst of wrath. Nobody can withstand you when you are hungry. It's like a volcano. Pooh! Outburst of wrath, selfish ambitions, dissensions, heresies, envy, murders, drunkenness, reveries. That is, you know, white partying, going to club. Some people from club comes to church. And after they have danced to this, you know, erotic music, they come back to church and leave their Oh, feel the hands. Look at Romans. Look at Romans. I think I, I, I didn't take time here. Romans. Romans chapter 1. That's another list there. Romans chapter 1. 28 to 32. Even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a debased mind. To do those things which are not fitting. Being filled with all unrighteousness. Sexual immorality. Wickedness. Covetousness. Maliciousness. It, 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 it will marvel you to see that there are some people in, in the church together now that they are not greeting each other. Malicious. And they have made an oath that until... They go to heaven. You won't go there. And we worship as if we don't know these things. Sexual immorality, wickedness, covetousness, going after things that you cannot afford. And there are some people, they are not faithful to God in their tithing. That tithe that they said they don't have, let Black, Black Friday comes. <laughs> Buying junks. <laughs> Covetousness, maliciousness, full of envy. 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 A brother is shouting hallelujah and you're doing like this. Murder. It's not until you, you know, you know, kill somebody with a gun that you murder the person. Once you speak ill about a person, you have murdered the person in your heart. Strife. Deceit. Some people fight like Fight with their husband, fight with their wife, fight with their children, fight with their parents, fight with their co-workers. In fact, in the place of work, they are labeled as the sheep fighter. <laughs> and they come back to church, carry their big Bible. Deceit. Some people, if they open their mouth, ha! And they say they are speaking the truth. It is lies raised to power hen. Deceit, evil mindedness, whisperer, backbiters. Backbiters. Some people backbite a lot on their phone. Three hours. What are you saying? Then, after backbiting and everything, you say, Let us pray. <laughs> I will never forget, you know, my father, he was having this, you know, this group, he was respected a lot. So he was having this group of people that they prayed together. I just saw my father not going there again. I said, Dad, why are you not going there? I said, I'm not going. It's turned into a backbiting group. They will backbite. They will talk ill of the pastor. They will talk ill of everybody. And then after that, they will pray. My father said, no, I'm not doing that again. This is the company of evil people. You can't company with such people and make heaven. All they see is what is not happening in the church. And they are not there 
to do anything. Like I said, they are too good to be used. Backbiters, haters of God, violent, proud, boasters, inventor of evil things, disobedient to parents. Come to church, but your parents cannot talk to you. You are just doing your own thing. You are in your whole world. Undiscerning, untrustworthy, unloving, unforgiven, unmerciful. Who knowing the righteous judgment of God that those who practice such things are deserving of death. That's the divine judgment for those things. Uh, lastly, let me read 1 Corinthians 6. 1 Corinthians 6. Do you not know, verse 9, that the unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of God? Do not be deceived, neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor homosexuals, nor sodomites, nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkard. Homosexuals. Sodomites. Thieves. Do you know, do you know that there are thieves in the church? There are thieves in the church. I, 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 I attended a wedding. I attended a wedding, you know, uh, probably in Nigeria. I attended a wedding uh, of uh, my friend in, in, uh, in Belgium, you know. And as he was dancing to go and uh, sign the marriage register, he was dancing as the father of the day. He was dancing. He had his new phone. He just bought that phone he was telling me. And uh, by the time he danced there <laughs> and came back to the altar, the phone was gone. <laughs> Thieves in the temple. No drunkards. There are some people now go, go, go to their house and open the refrigerator. You see beer. 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 Real, real one. I went to you know, England and uh, I was, my friend invited me to their church, you know, something. They said they were going on cruise. I think I've said it before. I said, oh. Because my friend said, oh, let me go. So he said, oh, I went with him. We were on that cruise, and they were worshiping God. It was, oh, I said, oh, hallelujah. <laughs> and we were in the, on Thames River. We were in the midst of the thing, and they just changed the light. <laughs> the light went red. I saw Guinness, different things. Ah, I opened my Bible. I said, oh. <laughs> <laughs> May the rapture not come here and meet me. <laughs> People do. Hot drinks. Even if the world is even saying you should stop it so that you can live long. Revilers, revilers, they talk ill of leaders. They don't care. Say, I don't respect anybody. I can give it to anybody. A pastor, is he not a person? Is he not a person? He doesn't have, you know, the person like, get away! Like they did, they did to Moses. Are you the only one that God is speaking to? And God said, I'm going to show you the difference. No extortioners will inherit the kingdom of God. You know, people extort in the name of Christ today. Because they know you are not going to check it out. Say, so, how much is this? He said, ah, it's, uh, you know, I, I got it for $500. Uh, but because you are my brother, I'm going to give you for 450 Go and check it outside. The amount is 200 
it has become so bad that people, they think twice to give Christians things to do. They rather go to Muslims. Love of money. You're living in sin and you're acting like a saint. In the kingdom, there is no double life, but only one life, and that is the life of Christ. I want everybody to shout the life of Christ. Come on, shout it. Come on, shout it again. <laughs> the list goes on. Stealing what does not belong to you. Like other people's coats. There are people that have missed their coats there. Yeah. There are people that have missed their cell phones here. There are people that their money have been stolen here. Without returning them. Instead using them and selling them. And you worship. And God sees everything. In fact, the cell phone you have now, you stole it. In fact, the shoes you're wearing now, you stole the money. Right. Chewing gum, doing the service and dropping the wrap and the chewed gum in the chair pocket. Some of you might have done that this morning. As I'm reading, just be checking. God is checking your mail. Come on, he's checking. I'm checking mine too. Like a bicycle attitude to corporate and focus group programs. E.g. Sunday service, you just come wherever you feel like. You know, Bible study, you just come wherever you feel like. Prayer meeting, you just come wherever you feel like. Open is not your own. GIT is not your own. GVL is not your own. CG is not your own. You are less concerned. And there is a familiarity with what we think will happen in the program. So some abandon the program for other programs because they have settled it in their mind that God is not there. The programs you have been going, what has happened to you? I want to ask that, that, that question again. That prayer line that you have, tell me, tell me your testimony. Oh, yes, 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 yes. That's something you went for. Tell me the drastic change in your behavior. You are just going after the flattery of human greatness. The Bible says, in vain is God being sought for a multitude of mountains. In vain. Eating and living trash in the sanctuary. Open your ears. Open your ears. Open your ears. By 12.30, you get out of this place. By 12.30. The service is to end 12.30. And I'm committed to that 12.30. But I'm going to give you the word. Every other thing, I'll send it to you. Eating, we cannot be doing these things. And then we say we are worshiping. We are making noise. Loose and moral jokes and talks among us. The Bible calls them jesting that are not convenient. Immorality in the sanctuary. Unresolved conflicts among families. Unforgiveness. And other relationship issues. If you are really born again, I'm, I'm saying that with all authority. If you are really born again, no issue between you and another person should survive 24 hours. Isn't that what the Bible says? That, that, that the sun should not set. 
if you are really born again, you won't be able to sleep. What are you looking for? Side conversation and lack of attentiveness during the service, particularly at the back. Even while the message is going on, God is speaking, you are talking, you are gisting, and you are distracting somebody seated by your side. Spreading rumors among the saints. Spreading rumors among the saints, things that are not true. Children running around the sanctuary after the service in the presence of their parents without any control. Talking back when the word is going on because we think we know. And we use our head knowledge to reason out what he is saying to us. And disregard to the teachings of the scriptures through flippant interpretation or outright dismissal. You just, you just, you just talk. I don't, I don't agree with what you're saying. I don't agree. Somebody did that in the house. U.S., you know, the House of Parliament. The president was giving, you know, his message. And uh, one, of, one of them said, shut up. You are a liar. Immediately after that, they called him to order. He was suspended. Said so that, that behavior does not belong here. How much more when God is talking to us? Dishonoring the message of God because of the messenger, playing the game of ranking ministers, which determines how we respect, respond to, and regard the administrations and overall person. We grade ministers. Isn't that what the church at Corinth did? I'm for Paul, I'm for Apollos, I'm for Cephas. When you begin to grade ministers, you are carnal. That doesn't mean you are spiritual. Not aligning with the word sent from the pulpit. Division among God's word. Through the angel of the house. Irreverence in how we talk about our leaders and how we treat them. Oh, come and see what people write about ministers online. This social media thing help us to operate in darkness. Some people even use false names so that they can talk against God's anointed anyhow. Selective obedience and disobedience to instructions from our leaders. Take note of this. Social media usage. Take note of this. These are from, from you people, not from me. What you have observed. Social media you know, usage. Posting pictures of youths and workers partying in clubs. Smoking e-cigarette. And posting almost nude pictures. These are what have been seen. You know, you come to church and you sing, but this is what you do. Why are you posing yourself almost naked? And let me repeat this. If you do that, a man in his right mind will not marry you. He will run away from you. Because, you know, this one, I say, ah, sweet baby. But inside his mind, say, huh, devil. That's what he's saying inside his mind. And this is what this person will be doing. Right. I told you of a person who, who, who visited the person they were cutting. And when he got there, the lady was so mad, was beating his brother, beating his brother. He said, stop. He said, no, I'm not going to stop. Stop, stop. And the man said, hey, once I leave this place, <laughs> no. this, this one will beat me to death. If you If you are not wise, what you think will work for you might be the thing that is working against you. Why would you show yourself? Who wants to see that? Bible says it's only for you 
and your husband. And the way. And there are some people doing that all around. When they are married, they are legally married. They tell the other, I'm tired. You are tired at that time, but you are not tired when you are single. I say that with all authority. Playing and dancing to secular and ungodly music at parties and weddings. It's as if we don't have... We don't have songs in Zion anymore. It is songs that are dedicated to demons that we are singing, that we are dancing to. Serving alcoholic beverages at parties after hearing the word of God over and over again. You know, I don't go to parties. Yeah, but people that go to your parties, they see. See all those things. Why would, you, why would you do something and then and people are getting drunk? People that you are supposed to reach, you are feeding them with alcoholic drinks, getting drunk under you because you want to please people? Nonchalant attitudes when prayer is going on. Let us pray. Everybody, you know, you can't open your mouth. And this one is a big one. Using electronic devices, such as smartphones, tablets, for non-religious purposes during church services. Phones ring during messages. Members watch movies. CG members play games. Or listen to different kinds of music during the service. Say, why are you doing The service is boring. You are boring. Because you don't know the difference. The church of God is not a place where you are, you know, you, 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 you go high. That's why some people are getting into drugs. Because they feel high. In the church of God, we feel high in the Holy Ghost. Inconsistent with time leading to murmuring among members. This is where you should know that this is a righteous thing. I'm not going to tell you this one that I've been said now is about me. That is why the Bible is so good. God would say what David did right and will write what David did wrong. Disobedience both to God and the leaders. Unforgiveness, holding on to past events, deliberately doing things that distract others during worship. See how seated we are, how close we are. If you are doing something that is wrong, you're distracting somebody else. And you are doing the devil's job for him. Loitering around the vestibule, parking lot, and the basement. You are just walking aimlessly. You traveled one and a half hours drive to church to come and roam around. This is another big one, improper way of dressing to church. We dress in ways we cannot dress to walk or worldly dignitaries. I went to a place, I think that same place, and my friend was telling me, you know, some people, they came to, to, that, to, that, to that cruise with suit, just, just well dressed. And my friend was telling me, huh, see this one, huh? Church, it would just wear this, you know, top and then jeans and with flip flop and we just come to church and say, this is church. There is freedom. But going to cruise, well dressed. How, how many of you have seen people that, you know, visit the White House? See how well dressed they are. I've never seen somebody in the house, uh, White House wearing jeans to go and see Biden. But you can't say that in the church. The people will dress, you know, almost half naked.
handling our ministerial assignment with a nonchalant attitude. We are not following through on our assignment as instructed, and lack of commitment and zeal in duties. Let me ask you, if you are working for men the way you are working for God, wouldn't you have been fired? Think about that. Would you still have your job? Nonchalant attitude to soul winning and follow up. Inequality in showing love to the brethren. A brother is doing something and because you, you are not familiar, you don't know that name. You don't show up. Not that you have something doing. But the day somebody you know is having name in ceremony, you'll be running here and there. And in the kingdom of God, we are one. Rushing out of the service without praying and committing to live by the word we have heard. Because we don't listen, we just, just go. We just want to rush. No. Let me ask this question. Imagine if you were God. Everybody, look at me now. Imagine if you were God. And saw people doing all these things and more before you. And you were God. Would you give them your best? Would you fight their battles for them? Would you answer their prayers? Would you lift them? That is the condition we have placed God. Although God is not a man, we must not abuse his mercy. He has the house of hope, young and old, where is my honor? And that is where conscience comes in. No matter how lofty the rules of engagements are, on how heavy punitive measures are, if the conscience is faulty, seared and dead, it will be of no effect. The testimony of your conscience is the only thing that will make you to reverence God. Because your conscience is your warning mechanism. And you want your conscience to be fully informed by the word of God so that you can do what is right. The conscience is a self-correcting mechanism. It makes you do well without supervision. It keeps you sane without rationalizing misconduct. It makes you to be aware, to be cautious, and to be correct. Without a pure conscience, you cannot have a pure worship. You must know that what you are doing is not wrong. Your conscience will begin to act like a smoke detector. Will begin to cry. This is wrong. This is wrong. This is wrong. And your prayer should be, Lord, give me a sensitive conscience. Give me a sensitive conscience. Now your conscience has been sensitized. From all the list of things, if you do all those things from now on, if you have a good conscience, your conscience will correct you. House of Hope. God is saying, you have a testimony in all the world for your faith and good works. But I have this against you. You have no reverence for me. You have no reverence for my word. You have no reverence for my house. You have no reverence for my servant. You have no reverence for my presence. Repent quickly to get the best I have for you and for your collective lifting. He that has an ear, let him hear what the Lord says to the church. January 31st, 2024, I heard this at 4.20 a.m. The wind of judgment is about to blow on some people because they have taken me for granted for too long. So if you are struggling with an ingrained habit of sin, excuse yourself and seek help. Because your eternity is much more important than your responsibility. And making heaven than your reputation. Do not offer strange fire before the Lord. Thus says the Lord, by those who come near me, I must be regarded as holy. And before all the people, I must be glorified. And so, Father, I have declared your word. 
to your people today. I know that, you know, your daughter, you know, as she was leading the worship, she didn't even know the message, but she said this is going to be a solemn assembly. And this is indeed a solemn assembly. Lord, give us the grace to honor your word. From the person that you have used to deliver this message to the people hearing, give us the grace to repent. On your seat, just project the prayer. And I want you to pray those prayer points. We just continue to roll it. Just continue to roll it. Lord, forgive us individually and corporately of the sin of irreverence and disregard for your presence. Let's open our mouth and then just talk to God where we are. Just, just, just talk to God. Just talk to God, young and old. Just, just, just in five, five, five seconds, just, just talk to God. Lord, forgive us individually and corporately of the sin of irreverence and disregard for your presence. Lord, heal our basculating as individuals and as a church. There are things that God has spoken to you about. There are things that God has spoken to me about. Lord, heal our basculating as individuals and as a church. Let's go to the third one. Lord, forgive us for offering strange fire to you in our worship and our service. Deliver us from living a double life and help us to live the life of Christ wherever we go. Let's, let's pray the next one. Lord, give us a sensitive conscience, well informed by your word. Please help us to fear you. Let our conscience be quick to receive from you. The next one, Lord, we choose not to be disobedient and stiff-necked people. Bless us with a heart of complete obedience to get your best. We will obey you. We will obey your word and the servants you have placed over us as overseers. Lord, help us to be eternity conscious in all we do. And help us live for your glory alone. Reverence. Reverence, reverence. The grace to reverence the Lord be upon us all. And if you are here, you are yet to give Jesus Christ a place in your heart. You're living a reckless life of sin. You have come to the right place. You have come to the right place. All you need to do is to just give yourself to the Lord and say, Lord, have your way in my life. I surrender my life to you. Lord, I confess you as my Lord and I believe in my heart that you are raised from the dead. So I call upon your name now to be saved. Oh, Father, I thank you. Father, I thank you. Individually, let's make a covenant to God that, Lord, I will listen to your word and I will not return back to my folly. Awaken my conscience to righteousness. I will never take your house for granted anymore. Lord, I will live my life to please you. And no matter the wrong that you might have done, this is the place of mercy. I say, Lord, I receive your mercy. God did not send this message to judge us. 
but to correct us. It is when we do not repent, when we take him for granted, that he judges. So I say, Lord, I submit to your order. I submit. Oh, Father, in the name of Jesus, I go on my knees, oh God, before you, the Father whom the heavens and heart is named. As your angel that you have sent this message to, have delivered. And we have made a covenant that we are going to listen to you. Lord, have mercy upon us. And let your goodness be upon us. We give you all the glory. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. And let everybody shout, Amen. amen. Come on, Amen. Come on, yeah, let's give it to the Lord. Let's give it to the Lord. Come on, let's give it to the Lord. Let's celebrate him. Hallelujah. We're giving him glory. So I want every one of us, every one of us, just, just remain calm wherever you are. By 12.30, we're getting out of this place. All right? So but make sure you flow along with everything. All right? Like I told you, we've laid a solid foundation in January, you know, of things that God wants us to know, and then from then on, we're going to keep to our time. God bless you. Dr. Halfa, please come and do the next thing, and then I'll come back and close the service.